which do then, once you do terrestrialize into your grass type, become a bit more threatening. Well, Pokemon trainers, we are seconds away from jumping into this junior division match. Give it up for our two players, Kohei and Sora, as they begin to kick it off to become the world champion 2023. Yeah, both players leading out with their Flutterman and Tornadus. Like we said, they <laughs> want to match that Tailwind, but we are going to see the Flutterman on Kohei's side activate that booster energy here, boosting its special attack, meaning it's going to be hitting that bit harder going into this first turn. We know that Sora's Flutterman does have the Choice Specs item, so it was already going to be kind of hitting very hard. The one thing you would say that Kohei has, he has access to that Protect this turn. So if he wants to choose to Protect at the Tailwind set up, that is an option for him, but I think first thing on both players' minds is to get their speed control underway this first turn. Exactly. The Tornadus is in a prime position to go for that Tailwind. Just trying to make sure that you're evening the score when it comes to speed. You don't want to give your opponent any unnecessary advantage. We're going to see the Flutterman leave the field here for Sora, just wanting to not avoid any unnecessary damage. As Heatran joins the field, able to take those fairy type attacks much better than Flutterman would have been able to do, as the Flutterman on the opposing side is going to go for a Protect. Tornadus gets the first Tailwind up on Kohei's side of things, but is it going to be matched by Sora? Yeah, and you are going to see the Tailwind followed up by Sora and the switch into Heatran really nice here because the booster energy kind of makes you not that keen to switch out your Flutterman, whereas if you've got the Choice Specs item, you don't really have anything that you've wasted that turn. Mm -hmm. You switch out the Flutterman, if you're Kohei, then you have lost that booster energy. You're not going to be able to get it back later in the game if you switch it out. Now in front of the Heatran, not in the best position. Your Bleak Wind Storm is not hitting for very good damage against that Steel Typing, and the Flutterman has to then rely on the Shadow Ball that it's got access to. The Heatran has to be careful still because it will get hit hard by that booster energy Shadow Ball, uh, but it can return back with some big damage itself with like a, a flash cannon. So you are seeing Kohei can keep that around a little bit later in this match. Yes, Iron Hand's going to join the fray as well. Going to be able to apply some pressure with something like a fake out into the following turns as Tornado sets the Rain Dance. This is really critical because it's going to enable the Bleak Wind Storms to be able to have 100% accuracy, but it will also help the other Tornadoes with that accuracy check as well. Yeah, the Kohei again, that uh, Rain Dance off and the Earth Power coming out, predicting that switch in, catching the Iron Hand's doing some huge damage this turn. Yeah, Heatran just hiding on the screen there, sneaking in that Earth Power, some good damage, and Iron Hand's does not get in for free at all. Yeah, Kohei is setting up the rain dance really good because it weakens the fire type attacks from the heatran of course that's really great uh, the one drawback of that is you're setting up the opposing tornadoes which mm -hmm. you saw there Sora taking full advantage of that with the bleak wind storm and getting some nice damage onto Kohei's side of the field and the iron hand's not looking in a great spot now it does have access to fake out so it can slow down the tornadoes on the opposite side of the field probably doesn't need to worry too much about the heatran but there is that earth power as well that you've got to be concerned about and you really haven't got the offensive pressure with the tornadoes to kind of do the damage that you want this turn. Exactly, he ran leaving the field, maybe needed to apply pressure with that Earth Power a little bit later on, and Fluttermain is going to rejoin, applying pressure with that Choice Specs, hoping to maybe get a strong knockout as Fake Out comes through, not going to affect a Ghost type, Fluttermain gets in relatively unscathed as the opposing Tornado does go for the Bleak Wind Storm, not dealing too much damage into either of the Pokemon on Sora's side, as Tornado's on the other side fires off another storm, it is a Typhoon across the battlefield right now. Yeah, and again a great switch, it, once again from Sora, bringing in that Fluttermain very good on its special defensive side, able to take that Bleak Wind Storm from the opposing Tornadoes, avoiding the fake out with its ghost typing, and now in a prime position where it can just throw out maybe one of those dozen gleams, pick up a double knockout pretty easily here and make it difficult for anything in the back to switch in to take that big damage. It's boosted now by that Choice Specs item that the whole mm -hmm. Fluttermane's holding. And Fluttermane generally quite a speedy Pokemon, like you said there. Choice Specs gonna be hitting hard. Something like a Dazzling Gleam would be able to pick up the KO against both the Iron Hands and the Tornadoes due to the low HP they've got, so it's not safe to switch either on Kohei's side. The Tornadoes on the opposing side does seem to be a little bit faster though, does get the speed drop on the opposing Tornadoes, that could be critical later on, but Fluttermane not going for the double spread move here, just locking in with the Shadow Ball to get the clean KO on Tornadoes. Yeah, not wanting to lock in with any of those fairy type attacks, just wanting to make sure they are all getting that knockout onto the Tornadoes. Quick Wind Storm coming out from Shaw, Sora's mm -hmm. Tornadoes and picking up the knockout onto the Iron Hands, a clean knockout, but the nice thing that Kohei was able to get was that Bleak Wind Storm off before it went down, at least getting some good damage onto the Tornadoes and that Fluttermane on Sora's side of the field. I mean, the Shadow Ball lock-in's actually really nice when you know that Kohei has brought the Fluttermane on his side of the field as well, so you want to make sure that you can hit it for some super effective damage with that Shadow Ball instead of locking into something like a Dazzling Gleam. That's a problem, however. Chi and Pao definitely is threatening both the Pokemon on Sora's side. Yeah, definitely. No booster energy for the Flutterman when it comes onto the field this end, but you've got that Chen Pao that's coming. You've also got to know 
watch this as well for later in this game if it sticks around for any longer than this turn the tornado has taken that speed drop so it won't be as fast as it was that previous turn flood them in in a really precarious position here as well cannot go for that protect because of the choice specs item on it so a real sitting duck here for either the Flutterman or the Shen Pao just to pick up the knockout there. Yes, of course, as well, the Sucker Punch on Chien Pao could be really strong, trying to get a knockout against either of these Pokemon. There are a lot of status moves that the Tornadus could go for to try and bypass this, but Fluttermane getting out of there, it's locked in. You know that it's going to go for an attack, and Chien Pao went for the Sucker Punch. It is going to fail as Tornadus goes for the Tailwind as well. So Sucker Punch, no matter who the target was, wasn't going to be able to kick there, and the speed advantage is now in Sora's favor. Yeah, and obviously that's great news for Sora. The Dozen Goon coming out, picking up the knockout on the Tornadus, but the key thing is he was able to set that Tailwind up once again, but that speed control back in his favor. That's really going to give him an advantage now going into the last few turns of this game because Kohei's lost his speed control, of course. Sora managed that situation really well, making sure that the Tornadus went down before it had the opportunity to set that tailwind up and managing his Tornadus just a little bit better, making sure that his Pokemon was supported. Does have to worry about that Sucker Punch, but now he's got the Amoongus next mm -hmm. to the Fluttermin. Can redirect that Sucker Punch, so it gives the Fluttermin a little bit more room to kind of maneuver, especially with that tailwind supporting it going into this next turn. There we go, Lee. It's the Rage Powder just wanting to protect the Fluttermane on Sora's side of the field as Fluttermane goes for the Dazzling Game this time. Super effective damage into the Chien Pao brings it right down to that Focus Sash and chipping away at the Fluttermane on Kohei's side of the field. Chien Pao not falling for the trap with the Sucker Punch going straight for the Ice Spinner and gets Amoongus out of here. Now Fluttermane is incredibly vulnerable to something like an opposing Shadow Ball. Of course, Amoongus has the last laugh in the face of that Chien Pao using the Rocky Helmet to be able to get the KO against it due to it being on only one HP remaining, but Fluttermane on Kohei side is looking scary now. Yeah, and the Dazzling Game coming out and picking up the knockout on Sora's Fluttermane. So doing a really good job here and does have access to that Protect, but it has to face down against the Heatran in the back. But Sora's kept preserved it for this point in the game. Going to be very difficult to deal with that Steel and Fire-type Pokemon. Yes, exactly. Heatran definitely has the type advantage against the Fluttermane. Interesting as well, Lee, we haven't seen any terrestrialization in this match. None at all, and I don't think either player really... It's, it's been so fast-paced, I don't think any mm -hmm. player really... Uh, been back and forwards with the Tailwind, just trading damage, and I think Sora's really taken the advantage there, and maybe it's something that Kohei thinks about going into game two, maybe Sora also kind of thinks about. I think because we didn't really see the Urshifu come out in this mm -hmm. game, Probably didn't need to worry about it with the Heatran too much. And Sora's really managed the game very well from his point of view, utilizing that Heatran. But we are going into this <laughs> final turn. Going to see that terrestrialization. Going to see a little bit of sparkle on the battlefield here in Grand Finals for the Junior Division as Heatran goes for its grass terror typing here. Just wanting to make sure that it can maybe catch a Fluttermane going for something like the Terra Water and being able to catch it with a powerful Terra Blast. That's what we're going to see as well. Kohei clicking that terrestrialization button as well. We're backtracking now. Both players going for that terrestrialization. They've heard us as we see the water terror type come out onto the Fluttermane, the grass terror type onto that Heatran. But the Heatran also has at its disposal that Assault Vest is going to be able to take these big attacks from the Fluttermane even better. And it's the Terra Blast, which is the grass type going into the water type. Fluttermane picking up the knockout and giving Sora a 1-0 lead in this finals match. What a fantastic way to close out game one. Sora now one game away from becoming world champion. That was so fast-paced, and what a dramatic ending. Fantastic prediction, knowing that the potential from that Flutter main was going to be that Terra Water, and just being able to get it in that solid knockout. Yeah, that was that was really, really fast-paced. You know, both players getting their tailwind up, trading damage backwards and forth. <laughs> and I think the one thing you would say, if you were sorry, you really took advantage of that Rain Dance turn, where the Tornado spent a turn setting the Rain Dance up. Great for the Blink Wind Storm, of course, for reducing the damage from those Fire-type attacks from the Heatran, which really didn't transpire. So in the end, you kind of put yourself at a little bit of a disadvantage because it meant in the end that you weren't able to get your tailwind up and then you were kind of having at the disposal of Sora who was able to utilize that tailwind with their own tornadoes. Yeah, I think that was a great observation you made actually in the pre-game analysis about how Tailwind's going to be going up on both sides of the field, but it really is about who potentially gets that second tailwind, is able to get that momentum. And as soon as the Tornadus went down on Kohei's side of the field, that gave Sora the advantage and opportunity to be able to set that tailwind up again. The Prankster ability, I think, coming in really, really strong. The other critical thing, I think, as well, was how the Iron Hands on Kohei's side really didn't play much of a role in this match. The fake out was null and void going into a ghost type, and then it just didn't have the flexibility to get off the field, come back in, and apply pressure on fake out into something like the Tornadus there to maybe stop that second tailwind. Yeah, that bleak wind storm that came out when it switched in was just... It really put it kind of a few steps back from where Kohei wanted it to be. And I think you want to really get that, that iron hands onto the field 
in a, in a much healthier position because then the switch as well from the Heatran to the Flutterman made it very difficult for the Iron Hands to get any utility going forward in that match. So you're already down a Pokemon and those Bleak Wind Storms just continually firing it out and the accuracy not an issue anymore from Sora. So the field just made it very difficult to kind of get a grip in the game. And I think when the Chen Pao and the Flutterman came back onto the field for Jorge, you, you don't really mind the Tornadoes going down at that point because you, you feel at that stage, I've got my second Tailwind up, I've got my Heatran in the back, I've got my Flutterman in the back, I've got my Moongus to support everything for at least one turn. I'm kind of happy with this position going forward. And I think this replay as well really highlights the support that the Tornadoes gave in this particular match. You know, getting those Tailwinds up and then being able to go for those powerful Bleak Wind Storms without having to worry about the accuracy. And this is kind of my question to you now, Lee. At the end of the day, setting up that Rain Dance, it's great for Kohei to be able to hit his Bleak Wind Storms, but then you are giving the advantage to Sora as well. Do you think Rain Dance is going to be still something to be considered for Game 2? I definitely do. I think but I think there might have to be a, a Pokemon choice. I would, I'd rather see something like the Urshifu Rapid Strike come in for Kohei rather than an Iron Hands, and then you're able to maybe terrestrialize that take advantage of that the mechanic, especially with the typing as well, and you're taking advantage of the rain, because you think about the mystic water that the Urshifu is holding, the water terror type on top of that, and the rain are also boosting that surging strikes. It's going to be doing some big damage. It also threatens the Heatran and almost baits it into having to go for that terror type, which then if you're preserving your Tornadus well enough, you can take advantage of those flying type attacks on that to threaten the Heatran from kind of both sides. So you've got the Bleak Wind Storm and you've got the surging strikes, so you're kind of pinning in the Heatran, which was such a problematic Pokemon for Kohei to deal with in that last game. And you've got to take your hat off to Sora because he really managed his side of the field very well and kept that heat trying to the very last um, Pokemon against the Flutterman and from that point it was really kind of wrapped up wasn't it so I think from Kohei's side a few adjustments I think the, the Urshifu like we've seen in throughout this tournament really takes advantage of that Chen Pao's sort of ruin ability as well so that would be the one thing I would say try and make that adjustment here but it's obviously down to the players and this is their choice so it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this one. Well, game two is underway. Let's go back to the stage. And we have got the Tornadus and the Fluttermane coming out for Sora. And then the opposing side, an adjustment here. Iron Hands has joined up, supported by the Tornadus. Yeah, the Iron Hands is a nice switch up here because it does give you that fake out support. You can go for it into the, the Tornadus on the opposite side of the field, set your tailwind up. So you've got the speed advantage going into next turn. The only thing is that you're not really going to get any advantage of that because the tornado is you're not going to be knocking it out this turn it will just be able to set that tailwind up the following turn and mm -hmm. you kind of don't want to be uh, back foot a few turns down the line where they've got one turn of tailwind after yours has run out and if you haven't preserved your tornado well enough so it might be better off going for that wild charge into that slot setting up your tailwind letting them tailwind at the same time because the, the Iron Hand should be able to take an attack from the Fluttermin with that Assault Vest. I completely agree. But we're going to see a few terrestrializations earlier in this Game 2 than we saw in Game 3. It's going to be on that Fluttermin here going for that Terra Water. Just wanting to be able to apply a lot of pressure, keeping the defenses in check as well. No Fake Out coming through. It's going to be the Tailwind on Kohei's side, first of all, getting the speed advantage up. We've seen it seems to be the faster of the two Tornadoses, but the Tornadus on Sora's side just going through those motions, getting the Tailwind up as well as Fluttermin. Main goes for the Dazzling Gleam. Significant chunk of damage, over 50% to both of the opposing Pokemon. As Iron Hands oh, goes for the wild shot, well, catches the water for the main. There's a huge, huge turn here for Kohei, <laughs> catching that terrestrialization on the Fluttermane, turning into the water type and wild charging into that slot, taking a huge offensive presence away from Sora's side of the field. That's how you make a comeback after losing game one, getting a one-hit KO against such a disruptive powerhouse as that Fluttermane. What an amazing start for Kohei. That's a great start to this second game. After losing the first game, coming back in... Uh, Amazing fashion in this game. Picking up the flood, I mean, like that is incredible. Put him in a really good position going into this next turn, of course, taking away one of the biggest offensive threats on Sora's side of the field. Honestly, I've got goosebumps right now, seeing that Wild Charge go down into the Flood Domain. Instead of the Tornadus that I felt was maybe the more obvious target, like you said, trying to get rid of it before it can have that potential to go for a second Tailwind later in the game, was incredible. Urshifu, however, is now able to join the field in replacement of that Flood Domain. Yeah, and now you do have the ability to kind of utilize that Urshifu a little bit more now, because it will have a bit more offensive pressure. You've got to be careful around the, the Iron Hands if you are, uh, or because you've got you know, the Wild Charge to still consider. That will do a big amount of damage to your Tornadus, of course. So doubling into that slot, you know, it's got the Assault Vest. You either force it out or you kind of just try and get rid of it this turn. 
Yeah, well, there's the detect on the Urshfu. Something Sora said that he was likely to be doing in this particular game, just preserving him from taking any damage from this frequent storm. That outside of Rain Dance is able to connect onto the opposing Tornadus, doing a significant chunk to it. As Tornadus also lands its frequent storms, but not enough to get the KO. Just missing out on the knockout there, and the wild charge coming in and picking up the knockout onto the Tornadus and Sora's heights. Oh, Koi taking real. <laughs> advantage of this and a big lead in this game. Obviously the Urshifu protecting there, didn't want to take the Bleak Wind Storm from the opposing Tornadus. And probably wasn't in a position where Sucker Punch would have picked up the knockout either. So you really need to manage that. It has got the Bleak Wind Storm onto it now. So it looks like a Sucker Punch would be able to pick up the knockout as long as his Tailwind is in effect. I mean, in game one, we were saying how Iron Hands was kind of underwhelmed. We didn't really get much done. It has been a turn of events in this game too, getting two solid KOs. It has, I think, obviously, Needing to give itself a little bit of a break, taking a lot of recoil from that wild charge, it's KO'd itself, but now you get that Chi and Pao on the field. The issue is the Amoongus. Amoongus can go for those Rage Powders and redirect away any Sucker Punches, but then Amoongus can also fall victim to something like the Ice Spinner coming out from that Chi and Pao. Yeah, and that's a big thing. We saw how detrimental that was in the first game, and you've got to worry as well. The Tornadus has access to Taunt, not going for it here. That Sucker Punch comes out from the Oshifu, knocking out that Tornadus, getting rid of that supportive Pokemon, but the Shen Pao being left alone here, going for a Sacred Soul into the Oshifu, and not enough to pick up the knockout surviving leaving the Amoongus to go for the score <laughs> shutting down the Shen Pao on Kohei's side of the field oh putting Chi and Pao to sleep not going to be able to go for any sucker punches or ice spinners into that Amoongus until it is able to wake up but Urshifu's definitely going to try and have something to say about it you know having that dark and fighting typing as well does give you access to some great moves like the wicker blow here or sucker punch as well that can apply a lot of pressure the flutter main on the opposing side definitely has to be wary but at the same time flutter main has the type advantage against that opposing Urshifu with something like a fairy type move yeah and it definitely has a speed advantage as well it can just throw out a dazzling gleam here and probably mm -hmm. pick up the knockout does need to worry about the potential sucker punch that could come out from that Urshifu though so um Choosing to terrestrialize here might be an option, I think, because if you can take away that weakness from the fairy type. Uh, yeah. the, the ghost type, sorry. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's no terrestrialization left on Sora's side. We saw that already with the Flutter Main, so Urshifu is going to have to keep its four times weakness to those fairy type moves. Honestly, I think the Flutter Main is the key Pokemon here for Kohei. You have to really consider how you want to preserve it. And there we go. Not going on the offensive quite yet. Going for this Protect. Just maybe wanting to see what the opposing Urshifu is going to do. Because that Sucker Punch, even with Unseen Fist, isn't going to work onto a status move like Protect. No, and I think the other thing you need to worry about as well is that Amoongus. Because it can, you know, if you're not going for an attacking move. Yeah, if you do survive the Sucker Punch, you're still going to be susceptible to getting sport here. So the Amoongus is still a problem Pokemon uh, as long as that Chen Pao is still asleep. Yes, yeah, so that's the other nice thing that Kohei was able to play around there, burning through that guaranteed turn of sleep on the Chi and Pao. Now has the potential to be able to wake up, but it is in a very vulnerable situation. That Pollen Puff did a huge chunk of damage, and another one's going to be able to pick up the knockout. Yeah, the, the Pollen Puff here, yeah, really good supportive option in normal circumstances, but very good against these frail dog type Pokemon. Chen Pao not going to appreciate that at all. The Flamingo going for another Protect here, avoiding that Sucker Punch is potentially going to come out, but the Urshifu is going for a Detect of itself this turn as well. The Amoongus is going to be left to attack as a Shen Pao is still fast asleep. Yeah, all eyes really on the Amoongus here. Going for that Pollen Puff is going to be able to get the KO against the Chi and Pao. I do really like this play though from the Protect on the Flutter Main because it wasn't so much about getting that second Protect, it was about stopping that potential from the Sucker Punch. Unfortunately, Chi and Pao not able to wake up and now this Flutter Main, you know, it's going to have to attack in order to get the knockouts. That's the only way you win Pokemon. And unfortunately, it's going to maybe have to take one of these Sucker Punches to do so. Yeah, definitely. Because if you want any damage onto that side of the field, you're going to have to attack. And doing so is going to mean that you're going to need to take a Sucker Punch. The big thing here is, though, that the Sword of Rune ability has left the field now. So that Sucker Punch won't be hitting as hard going into this next turn. We are going to see it come out, and it does survive! Just able to hang on, Dazzling Gleam is returned, but this Amoongus in prime position to get that final knockout with the Pollen Puff in order to crown its trainer, the potential world champion. Yeah, and the, the Amoongus is going to be a difficult Pokemon to take down here as it does go for that score once again, putting that Flutter Mint to sleep with only 10 HP. You've got to imagine one Pollen Puff is probably enough to seal this up for Sora. Amoongus not quite wanting to get the KO right yet. Going for that score, just trying to put the Flutter Main to sleep as we now have the last remaining Pokemon for both of our trainers, Amoongus versus Flutter Main. Yeah, and you can also look at the moveset that the Amoongus has got on Sora's side of the field. It does have access to clear smog, so it does have a way to damage that fairy type. We are going to see Kohei go for this terrestrialization onto the Flutter Main. Finally, it will be that Water Terror type, and hopefully it has to spend a turn this turn sleeping, so it needs to get through this turn. Can it get through this one turn against the Amoongus? This is the question. Does Amoongus have 
the oomph in order to get the knockout here. It's only really got that pollen puff or the clear smell, but it gets the knockout. Sora Every Sora is your 2023 Pokemon World Champion.